<clears throat> well hey friends and neighbors this is chuck out at sheraton park farms welcome back to the farm so we just got a call from the post office um a batch of meat chickens that we ordered um have just come in so ride along with us let's go pick those up we'll come back we'll show you how we set them up in the brooder to get them off to a good start so hopefully we can have a uh, good batch of meat chickens ready to go for some customers here in uh eight or nine weeks so hang out with us for a little while that's us see them seeds are bad. <laughs> <laughs> them seeds are bad. It's just the compost bed right now. That's what I get all the time. I get all these bad seeds. Bad don't seeds. nothing come up. Where are we going? We going to get some chickens. How many chickens we get? I don't know. Yeah, God only knows it's how many. Either fifty or a hundred. I don't know. Yeah. So now what? Did, what did we order this time? These are Jackies and. <coughs> so. Going by the website, um, the color yields are supposed to ship on Monday. Okay. And the Jackies and the production line, what was the name of that other one? Anyway. Wasn't the Kosher King one? Yeah, yeah, Kosher King. Okay. So we had 50 color yields coming on Monday and 50 of the roosters coming on Tuesday. Okay. So they're a couple days late. We usually get them Wednesday. on Wednesday morning, and today's so they're, Thursday. they're 24 hours later than usual. So we got 50 color yield, which are the ones that we normally raise for meat. And then we've had a lot of folks that have come by, stopped in, called, that want to buy a rooster, a live rooster, to slaughter themselves and cook. And Typically, the only roosters we've got are egg roosters. And so we thought we would just get 50 of these birds. And they're 50, they're 25 kosher king and 25 jackies. Yes. Is that right? So we got so we got two different breeds, but all roosters. <clears throat> so we're gonna grow them out and advertise them as live birds for sale for folks that wanna kill and process their own chicken. So we'll try it and see. Um, Worst comes to worst, we'll just process them and put them in the freezer and sell them, you know, like we normally do. But anyway, always experiment, trying to figure out a new way to do stuff. So we'll see what we get. We yeah, we'll see what get we get. Because the, I got two different tracking numbers, one for Monday and one for Tuesday. Well, then I was looking at the Tuesday number and it was canceled. So I don't know if they just lumped them all together. Yeah. Or what's, we'll see. Yeah, who knows. And then they're, you know, we're wondering if the Postal Service isn't all jacked up again, so who knows. Okay, so the way this deal works is we order these chicks um, from the hatchery, and then they ship them straight to the post office. And we've had a lot of questions about how does that deal work? Place an order just like you would order a shirt or a pair of shoes or whatever um, from the hatchery. And then on the morning that the birds, or the, at the, whatever time the birds get to the post office, depending on whenever the delivery at the post office is from the distribution center, the post office will call you and tell you that your birds are here. So they called us, what, about 20 minutes ago? About 20 minutes ago. So we came down and... You can hear them? Yeah, yeah, I can hear them too. <clears throat> Ring the bell. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? All right. Here's some baby kids. Oh, okay. I'll just, I'll just hold it. Hey. There ain't a hundred in there. There ain't a hundred in there. How you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah. I don't know. I Thanks a bunch. You too. Live aminals. I don't know. There may be a hundred in there. And that's it. We just swing down, pick them up. That says live animals. Chicks, grasshoppers, hatching eggs, chickens, live fish and worms. <clears throat> I don't know that I'd be ordering grasshoppers and worms. That one's empty. Okay. All right. 
So we'll take them home, put them in the brooder. All right, once you get your chicks home from the uh, from the post office, you're gonna need to have your brooder set up. And so we've got, you know, a couple of big brooders. We've showed these on some videos in the past. We got our lights. We got two different lights in here just because of the amount of floor space um, that's in the brooder. We got water, plenty of fresh water. And then we um, will put rocks in the bottom of our drinker because these guys are really, really small and that gives them something to stand on. If they get up and step over in there, they fall in, they can get out and they're not gonna drown. Chickens do not swim well. Um, I've learned that the hard way. Make sure you got plenty of feed. Um, we typically go with about a 24% protein chick starter. If you're doing turkeys, um, keep in mind you'll need to have a higher protein. And typically what we'll do there is we'll just get a game bird starter um, for, uh, you know, like quail and that kind of thing. That seems to work fine for turkeys. Everybody here gets 50 pounds per 30 birds of um, all of our chick starter. So that will, uh, that'll get them through That'll get them pretty much through the brood um, and then back out onto uh, pasture. And then we'll move them over to just our regular, our regular feed regimen. So this is the brooders, pretty simple setup. Plenty of water, plenty of feed, lights, fresh shavings. And then uh, we'll flip the lid down and just a safe, secure place. That's really all they need. The big reveal here. Ah. I got a feeling those are the Jackies. <laughs> so looked on the uh, invoice that they sent us. We've got 50 of the Freedom Ranger Color Yield and 25 of the Red Jackies. So I think these over here are the Red Jackies and then I think these guys here are the, uh, are the Freedom Ranger Color Yield. So we're just gonna get them over in the brooder. We'll show you how we transition them into the brooder and uh, then they'll be, they'll be off and running. So when you first bring your chicks home, um, you're gonna to need to teach them where the water is. So we just take them and we will dip their beaks in the water. Um, we shouldn't drop them in the water, but we'll dip their beaks in the water. And uh, see, he's, he's drinking there. So now that just orients them to where the water is. <clears throat> just grab them around the neck and then put your finger on the back of their head. Show them how you're holding those chickens there, baby. Thumb on the back of its head. Thumb on the back of its head, yep. Down. Its head goes in the water. I can't see that. You hold it like this with your thumb on the back of its head. And then you just come down, dip it, and then set him down. And that's it. Yep. So just hold that thumb on the back of the head, then just force his little beak down into the water for just a brief second. You're not waterboarding them, uh, you're not hurting them. Um, that just orients them to where the water is. Chicks are actually pretty hardy. I mean, they're they're pretty tough little animals. Um, so you're not gonna hurt them as long as you're not, um, you know, just throwing them around and being just completely abusive to them. Um, they, they'll, they'll do fine. All right, so we think, we think they sent us 32 of these red jackies. So I don't think they're all mixed up. I, they probably are. They're probably all mixed up. That's fine. They will, uh, they'll reveal themselves. They'll reveal themselves as we raise them out. Everybody's settled in now. Feed, water, kind of up there in the shadow. I don't know if you can see it. Got a few huddling up here. Um, just getting them out of the box. They're, that's pretty normal behavior. They're gonna they're gonna huddle up there under that light. Everybody's gonna try to warm up. Then there's always a few that are out, kind of exploring the space and figuring stuff out. These guys over here. These are the Jackies. We think they're the Jackies. Very active. Um, out running around. We got a couple back here in the back corner that's acting kind of cold. Back over here under this light. But everybody else is, I mean, they're out running around looking good. So they're I think, be all roosters. yeah, these are supposed to be all roosters. <clears throat> so uh, I think we're in good shape here. We'll watch them. Had a little leak on the water 
on our water bucket here a minute ago, so we had to adjust on it. Put some dry shavings in there, so I think we're okay. But we'll just watch them today, see how they do. Um, one thing on, let me show them this lock on this lid. One thing we had to do on these brooders here, last year we had a uh, raccoon or something get in, possum, I don't know what it was. So we had to go back and put this, these hook and eye latches on here so we can latch that down. And now that thing, you can't can't pick that up, or at least a small critter couldn't. So good secure spot for the chicks. And final number, what were the final numbers? 31 and 82? No, 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 no. So, 32 and 51, 32. So we had 32 of the Jackies, 51 of the color yield. So uh, a few extra birds in there. I always appreciate the hatchery doing that. They typically will do that just to account for, you know, a little loss in shipping and that kind of stuff. But no loss in shipping, everybody arrived alive. So kudos to the US Postal Service today for uh, getting us these chicks in good shape. Okay, so these birds have been in the brooder now for about 10 hours and I had to take the water out of this one. Um, the daggone drinker has leaked just about every drop of water in here. So I'm gonna have to get these birds out, clean these shavings out, put some dry in because I mean, it's wet. And you can't tell because of the light and the way this light works on it. But they, I mean, the shavings have gotten wet in here. So I'm gonna have to pull the birds out and pull all the shavings out and replace the shavings and uh, fix, the, fix the drinker. But outside of that, these are the uh, these are the red jackies. Everybody here is looking really good, doing fine. And then over here in our color yield, um, the drinker's working here. I mean that thing's still full. The drinker up there is dying on empty. I know 25 birds hadn't drunk, 25 little chicks hadn't drunk that thing down today. Everybody over here looking good. Um, so, like I said, all the ones that we got from the post office, everybody made it. No death in uh, in transit. So um, I think we're in good shape here. The only thing I need to do, again, is just uh, trade, that, uh, trade that drinker out up there, get some dry shavings, and uh, get them fixed up. But, uh, you know, brooding chicks, brooding meat chicks are easy. Um, if you're interested in doing this, um, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot. Just a warm, dry place, a little heat lamp, a little feed, a little water, and uh, you can get them off to a real good start. And uh, they should do fine. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in meat chickens, go for it. Don't, uh, don't be waiting around. Um, just jump in there and get it done. You can do it. Heck, if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's for sure. So, all right. Got a little maintenance to do here. We'll get this fixed, figured out, and uh, we'll be off and running. So that's it on our uh, new batch of meat chickens. Uh, got them set up. I'm gonna go back down and uh, clean all that, uh, all those wet shavings out, put them some fresh shavings in there and take care of them. But again, you know, if you're interested in doing meat chickens, they're not hard at all to do, especially the brooder piece of it. And then once you get them out on pasture, just move them every day, make sure they've got, you know, plenty of fresh water and feed. And chickens pretty much take care of themselves. They're, they're not difficult at all to uh, raise. Good little enterprise to get into. Um, or if you just want to, you know, raise some chickens for yourself, for your own family's use, um, super easy to do. I will post a link to a video right here where I talk about how much money you potentially could make raising uh, pasture chickens if you want to get into it on an enterprise scale. But uh, anyway, if you've not hit that subscribe button, hit subscribe, follow along with us. And as always, we appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.